I think we have to think about migration as it had been up until the 1500s. So people are always migrating um, within countries and between countries. At that time, people didn't really try and stop them. Governments were quite keen to have people coming. And so people were coming to work, they were coming to trade. And there were, there were, so there were lots of contacts between the different British nations and also uh, with foreign countries a lot of contact with the low countries what, what's now Holland and Belgium because of a huge trade in wool and cloth between England and the low countries. Now what happens in the 1500s changes the whole nature of migration. Martin Luther in 1517 begins a process of religious conflict, the Reformation. His aim is to reform the way Christians worship but it turns into a long period of division about belief, of persecution, of often violent conflict, of revolution and of war. And so that means that people are now moving not just to make money or to improve their lives, but often to escape a violent and very nasty death. The biggest and probably the best remembered movement of peoples at this time was of French Protestants. And these were the famous Huguenots. Huguenot, and many of them came to live in England, Scotland and parts of Ireland. They brought with them skills which were often very short in England at that time. We think often of their artistic skills, furniture making, silverware particularly, uh, and these were one of the largest groups of migrants or of refugees we've ever had, certainly tens of thousands. There is movement within the British Isles. Uh, London, then as now, and the area of the southeast of England is the richest part of the archipelago. So naturally it attracted people who wanted to work. And some of those people came from outside England, from Ireland and from Scotland. So there was resentment within England and often quite a lot of anti-Scottish feeling among people who thought that the Scots were coming to take our jobs, a sort of classic complaint. Uh, and uh, not least of Scottish aristocrats who were coming to govern or to help govern the new United Kingdom of England and Scotland. Another thing that was different in this period, and now we're moving into quite a different realm of experience, is movement across the oceans. Okay, people had crossed the Channel and crossed the North Sea for centuries, but now we're talking about people crossing the Atlantic. Uh, people who were mainly going because they wanted to, they were looking for a better life, either religious freedom or, or simply to make more money, but also people who are being forced to move. Here we have the beginning of quite a long history of movement of criminals. Countries were quite keen to get rid of people who were making trouble, uh, often not big criminals, you know, people who'd stolen a handkerchief or proverbial loaf of bread or something, but if they did it more than once, they were quite likely to end up facing a choice between the gallows and what was called transportation. So people were in fact being sent off to, to populate the colonies. That was thought to be a good way of using them uh, in a productive way. And so people were being first of all sent off to America, to the colonies in the West Indies or on the North American mainland. So if we're thinking of this throughout our whole period as a kind of circular movement, you could say there are people crossing the Atlantic from Britain. There are people coming to Britain from the near continent particularly refugees. And then there are people moving backwards and forwards between these places, both British people and uh, French, Dutch, German, uh, Americans. But the, the big movements are those of migration to the colonies and from the continent of Europe of religious refugees to Britain.